Okay. Uh, first, I want to congratulate Kentucky. Uh, you know, outstanding team. I mean, we kind of saw something special there with them this year. Um, you know, played them here early, and, and um, uh, it was a good effort. And we went there, and they kind of handed it to us. And then they really got it going, and you saw how hot they were. And, you know, there was that understanding that we could obviously match up again uh, down the road, you know, and it's um, – you know, I'll take my hat off to them. Phenomenal team. Uh, one of the best teams we played all year. Um, you know, I know how much respect these guys have for them and, and uh, really get along with a lot of their players. I, I've been here 11 years. I, I understand the rivalry. I understand um, the passion the fans have for it. But, you know, for these kids, uh, they grow up playing against these kids. They play against them in travel ball. They play with them and against them in the summers. And um, they have a lot of respect uh, for those guys. So, um, if you're a Kentucky fan right now, you should be very happy. Um, you know, that was a phenomenal team. You, you got a, a great young coach. Um, you got an awesome pitching coach uh, in Jimmy Bellinger and, and a phenomenal coaching staff. So, I mean, I think the future's really bright. And maybe they didn't go as far as you would have liked them to go. But, man, um, what a springboard that was, uh, you know, to, to a new coaching staff. And, um, I know it's tough on them right now and tough on their fan base, but um, we love the rivalry. We, we love playing against them and, um, because it means so much to you fans, and, and I hope, hope you can celebrate the success that those guys had this year. Um, with that being said, I'm going to hand something over to Drew, and I'd like Drew to read because I think it kind of sums up uh, where we were at um, after last year and understand that these guys sitting next to me uh, went – back-to-back -back years losing um, in the Super Regionals. And so we, we met uh, less than 24 hours after last year's loss in the Super Regionals. And um, I challenge these guys to get after it in the summer. Um, no self-pity. No one's going to feel sorry for us, but maybe your family members and friends. Um, and so let him read the uh, Lion Chasers manifesto. I'm reading this because Coach Mack wouldn't be able to get through it all, so that's why he gave it to me. <laughs> called the Lion Chasers Manifesto. Quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. Run through the roar. Set God-sized goals. Pursue God-given passions. Go after a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. Stop pointing out problems. Become part of the solution. Stop repeating the past. Start creating the future. Face your fears. Fight for your dreams. Grab opportunity by the mane and don't let go. Live like today is the first day and last day of your life. Burn sinful bridges, blaze new trails, live for the applause of the nail-scarred hands. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right with God. Dare to fail, dare to be different. Quit holding out, quit holding back, quit running away, chase the line. Well done, Drew. <laughs> and, um, and that's obviously why we're here. I mean, this group, this group ran towards the roar. That's been our, our motto all year. And i um, super proud of them, super happy. Uh, but we didn't come here for some of it. Came here for all of it. Questions from players. Drew, the home runs today, and you've done it to everybody all year, but especially Kentucky this whole season. Um, how special is that to get them and to take you guys to Omaha? I think this game meant a great deal. Um, as you can see, it's the game that we needed to win to get to Omaha. Uh, and you know, I was I wasn't trying to do too much. I was just trying to to get on base and. Um, be patient and put good swings on the ball, um, and I did that. Uh, you know, hit a couple balls hard, and um, you know, Jelly is an extremely good pitcher. Um, he's going to be something special down the road. I said it before. You know, he's six eleven, and he throws straight down. He's he's tall. It's, it's tough to pick up. So, you know, I, I was just trying to stay simple, trying to not to do too much. Um, got a got a fastball and got a slider. So yeah, I just put a good swing on it. Through entering this series, did you make it like not do too much? Don't overthink this. Just take it at bat at bat. I mean, did you make a conscientious effort of that? Yes, I did. In the regionals, I was um, I, I was trying to do way too much. You know, being a hometown kid, I, I wanted to to you know to hit the home runs, to you know get the RBIs, to be this player of the game, etc. But you know, I came into this weekend just laying it all out there. You know, I got to be better. I got to bring energy. I got to bring edge. Um, you know, and I got to keep the intensity up in the dugout and on the field. Um, 
but the, there was definitely a conscious effort to to stay simple and and just do simple better. Brendan, you've had a lot of <laughs> Too many emotions to think of, really. Uh, just the, the whole, your whole career and uh, just everything in that moment, you know, the last time you could ever pitch on, well, the last time you're ever going to pitch on that mound again. Um, it's just a, a great feeling to know that you've had a lot, of, a lot of success. You've been to a lot of great places and a lot of dark places in that field. and. Um, it was just a great feeling to have overall. Brendan, I know all the accolades that you had have gotten and all the awards and everything, but what does it mean to keep going to Omaha with this team? It means everything. Um, that's what we we sit in here for every team meeting, every anything. You, know, you look around and you've got three different pictures of the fields in Omaha, and you want to put your own picture up there. And I've done it for going on three years now. I've looked at that picture a lot and that picture a lot. Um, just seeing it and you want to get there and you do whatever it takes. You push your body to its limits every year, um, pushing towards that goal. We're in the Kentucky folks say that you bent but you didn't crack in the sixth and seventh innings. What, how did you summon enough you know, reserve to get through those two jams? Really, you, it's just a buildup of you know your whole your whole baseball career. You've you've gotten into jams um, throughout your whole life. They may not have, they may not have been to that circumstance or that level, but um, just that whole build up and that whole training that you've had. Um, you may not have thought of training. It just builds up in your mind, and you uh, you go to a different place. You go to become almost a different person in that situation. Like I gotta I gotta have my stuff here and. Um, just everything becomes a little, di a little bit different. Do you have a favorite moment that you had in this stadium? Today, really. Um, after the, the two previous seasons of just being so close to winning in, in 15 and then last year with being up uh, three runs in the ninth and you know, it all just comes crashing down on you, um, this is probably the best moment I've ever had. Logan, talk about that catch. <clears throat> There's no way I wasn't catching that ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, last two years, kind of got away from um, the games, got away from us late in the supers, and I just saw it hit, and I knew it had to be me. How much of a, of a mission were you on? I mean, you know, obviously, you guys wanted this, but. Uh, is it making it even sweeter after the last two years that you've been able to get over this hill now? It's very refreshing to be able to go back to Omaha, yeah. And it makes the, I guess, all the work you do and all the frustration that you've had building up over the last two years to finally get over that hump, yes. But, like, now that we're here, like, we still got a mission to do. So, I mean, that's we've been cut off as supers. and. Okay, finally, now we're past that. Now we can keep going. Logan, can you touch on the emotional highs and lows of this series? You guys are in the lead the entire time. So. <clears throat> I mean, the game was going to be emotional regardless. I feel every postseason game this season has been emotional. And yeah, and a clincher game to send us to Omaha. I mean, I don't even remember most of the game, to be honest. I was just gone. Brendan, can you talk about the dog pile? You kind of maybe sidestepped a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was told that I wasn't allowed to get in the middle of it, so I had to refrain myself from jumping in. But, uh, I mean, I've, I've done it in high school. I've done it multiple times in high school, and then now to finally get to do it, and go to, to Omaha, it's just a different feeling. It's what you live for is, as a high school player, getting recruited, going to college, and then you know finally being in college and being on the doorstep every year, just now it takes it to a whole new level. Logan, you, didn't, you went right in the middle, didn't you? 
actually jumped over the pile. I was so excited. <laughs> I, I went, I, I tried to land on top and I went over and landed like on my head. So, but I was good. I got right back in it. It was, yeah, it was awesome. Brent, when you're up there, are you, are you just trying to hit the ball hard or were you thinking home run when you went up there? Either? There's some times where I do think home run and it doesn't work out. So today it was, it was, like I said, it was, um, you know, do simple better. Just be as simple as possible. Not try to do too much. Um, hit the ball hard, and I'll just get on base. And you know, fortunately, it worked out. Anything else for the players? Drew, what about the difference in emotions? I mean, the last two years, you guys have talked about the heartbreak that you've experienced. Today, you got to experience the joy of, of going to Omaha. It, it's uh, it's special. You know, the the I, I obviously redshirted and wasn't here when Fullerton beat us, but. I, um, you know, last year against Santa Barbara was um, was heartbreaking. You know, you had the five guys who were drafted or whatever. Um, those guys were were special players. Obviously, you can tell by how high they got drafted. And you know, we had a special team last year, and to get to get our hearts broken um, against Santa Barbara was tough. But you know, we make conscious effort every year to uh, when we sit down here in the, our first meeting of the year. It's you know, you know what you signed up for. You know why you're on this team. If, if you don't want to play baseball, if you don't want to get better, if you don't want to go to Omaha, then you can, the doors are right there. And that's what you buy into when you come to this program. And um, our guys are bought in, that's for sure. Brandon, how, how do you plan to spend draft day tomorrow? What you, what's your plan? Uh, really, uh, here. we're gonna we're gonna be here. I'm, I I asked all the guys if they wanna. Um, Are you supposed to go high or something? No. <laughs> uh, I asked all the guys if they wanted to come, uh, like, do another watch party like we did last year. Um, I know I got some family in town that, that'll be here, but I just want to spend it with the guys that I, I've built, this re built a relationship with and been with highs, lows, and even, you know, lowers of lows than at some times when, you know, things aren't going well, but they're always there to pick you up and be there for you like all, like these two guys you know Logan he he comes out to me and says hey man just keep doing you you know if you're having a bad day at the plate but like today you know didn't have great success but everybody's like hey you know just keep going out on the mound that's what you live for in, in a team where you know you're not your best or you're like you're, you know you're not you that day but there's guys that pick you up and you know give you that motivation to keep going right and after the ACC tournament Just that whole new feeling of, you know, all right, it's over with. We lost. Um, it's a whole new season. Clear your mind and get ready for whatever storm's coming. Drew, how much does this rivalry mean to you? <coughs> you have 17 RBIs against Kentucky in six games. That's pretty good. Um, I don't know. I just, I guess I just like playing against them. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a big rivalry. You know, Coach Max says it. It's it's more for the fans than it is for us. You know, we play. It's just another game, but um, I kind of put it in my back pocket. Like, okay, we're playing UK. Let's let's do this thing. You know, and I, I don't try to do too much, and it showed. So, Brandon, what's your thought process before this draft? Now, now that this is out of the way, and, and that's the next big thing on your list, are you kind of calm, cool, and collected like you always are, or are there some some nerves heading into this thing? Yeah, you're. you're you're gonna be calm or put up a calm front, but inside, um, unless until you know you know where you're going, your name's called. It's you're kind of you either got butterflies or um, just that waiting moment of you know when's when am I gonna get called or whatever. One more for the guys, or not? Okay. <laughs> My brother says I get to be like Dick Vermeil sometimes in these uh, press conferences. And so that's why I had Drew uh, read that first statement, but I'm just going to jump right in. You know, my, my devotion today was on joy and peace. And uh, we talked about it, you know, when we won the regionals, the peace I had. And, and then I remember how he asked me on Thursday um, at the press conference about that peace. And... Uh, 
and it was it was a smile when I when I opened up my Bible this morning and the heading was joy and peace and uh, the verse was Psalm 511 but let all who take refuge in you rejoice let them shout for joy forever may you shelter them and many and may those who love your name boast about you and you know it it obviously gave me peace um, and as a Christian we understand what real joy is I mean to be children of God uh, the joy that we get it made me think a lot about this team you know man this team brought man, so much joy this year and you asked Brendan about the draft party and you know we said yeah Monday night we're gonna have a draft party here and you could say well what if you don't win and everybody's gonna be crushed and devastated but I remember thinking man we're we're gonna run towards the roar you know, we, we don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, we're going to go after this thing and win or lose. Uh, we're going to celebrate celebrate the draft Monday night. Um, you know, for the past few years, we've we've had to be one of 16 teams dealing with the draft and playing at the same time. And I kept reminding our coaches and reminding our program, there's 280 programs that would give anything to trade places with us. You know, so now we're going to be one of eight teams, or maybe there's a couple still playing in the Supers on Monday night. And, I mean, we have to embrace that. You know, we, we have to enjoy that, uh, the opportunity we have and, and where, we're at, where we're at. And so I'm obviously very happy for this team, but happiness comes from something happening. You know, joy is different. I mean, real joy um, is a different level. And if you're a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. And from this team this year, uh, man, real joy. I mean, just the way they went about business, um, the peace that they had doing it. Uh, now, a little goofy at times and, and a lot of personality, um, but, you know, I, I just embraced it. You know, how much fun it was being around these guys. Um, and, and I give them a lot of credit because, you know, like I said, no self-pity. You know, we, we, we met right in this room less than 24 hours after um, losing in the Supers. And, man, you you got to have a lot of courage. You know, as a player, you could, you know, ah, man, do I, do I really want to go through that? Do I really want to put it on the line? Do I really want to set the bar that high and deal with the, with the loss? And, man, I give those kids a lot of credit. We could have made a lot of excuses. All the players we lost, lost to the draft, maybe it's just not so. Um, and I'm so happy. Uh, obviously because of what happened, but the joy I have for this group. Um, you know, the four seniors that got to go to Omaha as freshmen, uh, Sparger, Summers, Lyman, and Taylor, um, but that's it. I mean, the juniors, uh, the legacy that they're going to leave in this program, the McKays, the Harrisons, the Fitches, uh, the Ellises, um, the McClures, and I'm going to leave somebody out, and I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I'm sitting there thinking – Man, I wanted those guys to go to Omaha, something fierce, something fierce. Uh, and, and we sat in this room with the freshmen this summer when they got here. And I told the freshmen, you're going to benefit from what just happened. And I know it, it hurt watching it on TV or maybe watching it in the stands, but I'm just telling you, you will benefit from what this group just went through, the older players, the rising sophomores, the rising juniors, and the rising seniors. Um, and so as a coach, um, you know, I'm, I'm super proud of this group because uh, I pushed them, but they wanted to be pushed. And I challenged them, uh, and I'm happy. I'm happy that uh, they put it on the line. And uh, that they, as every group does, I mean, this group, this group taught me a lot. I learned, I learned a lot um, about courage, about brotherhood, um, about relationships, uh, about trust, about faith, um, and 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 um, so you know we're gonna we're gonna ride this thing as long as we can. Coach Brendan referenced the photos of all, <coughs> all around the room. Well, some coaches may not want to put that kind of thing up. I guess you know maybe there's photos of players or past Louisville things. But what, what was the reason to want Omaha? You know, just um, 
the law of attraction. If you see it, you can be it. You know, and, and um, if you notice, you know, we, we, we celebrate the All-Americans uh, on the All-American wall. Uh, we celebrate the championships with all the dog piles, and we filled up the building. Um, but we wanted a special group, uh, you know, for, for the teams that went to Omaha. And we thought this is the room we're going to spend the most time. So why not do it right here? I mean, we, we, uh, we meet in here. Uh, we have scouting reports in here, highlight videos in here, um, chapel every week in here. Um, and so, you know, like Brendan said, they spent a lot of time walking in this room. Uh, and I know they're not looking and listening to me uh, at every meeting. So they, they can easily glance around and, and daydream. And daydreaming is good. I, I think it's really good to dream, um, you know, about, about where it is you want to get in life. Coach Logan Taylor, it seemed like was kind of that spark plug for you guys all weekend here, and, and I imagine he's been like that a lot this season. It almost seems like he can get overshadowed sometimes with some of these other big name guys. But how much has he meant for you guys? I mean, I I speak to the the, the pro world a lot, and um, you know, I'm 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 biased, but I'm real because I know I know everything about him. And you know, Logan was a guy I've been selling. You know, I said if the fifth pick of the draft last year didn't play center field. What does that tell you about Logan Taylor? Logan's the best center fielder in the country. I mean, the only other catch I've seen like that was the catch Flowers made from Florida State against us, you know, in the ACC tournament. I mean, no disrespect to other outfielders, but, I mean, we felt all along we had the best center fielder in the country. Um, I mean, from, from my first year here to Boomer Whiting, uh, to the Adam Ingles and the Cole Sturgeons, and, and we've had some great outfielders. And Corey Ray's a great outfielder. I mean, Corey could play all three outfield spots, just like Stores, Summers, and Lyman. But Logan Taylor's a center fielder, and um, I've been watching him do that, especially in the postseason, uh, for several years now. I mean, it's really uh, and it's very fitting because he struck out uh, to end the inning. And we talk about the ball will find you, and we chart it. And the kids joke about it. If you strike out to end the inning with runners in scoring position, the ball is coming to you the next inning. So you could carry your bat to the field. You could be a baby. You could live in the batter's box world. But like I said, no self-pity. You run out there and you play defense. And, man, he did it. And he did it on the biggest stage at the biggest moment. Yeah, I uh, I just congratulate him. I mean, you, you just have to congratulate what he did this year. And um, I gave Jimmy Bellinger a big hug. And I told Jimmy, you, you'll get there. Because Jimmy's been in a few Super Regionals now. Uh, he got there with us, of course, as a player. Um, but, you know, I know, I know it's hard. I know he's hurting. So I just wanted Jimmy to know <laughs> we've been there. Um, but, you know. He's one of the top pitching coaches in the country, and um, I just tried to lift him up, um, you know, because I know I know they're hurting. <laughs> Unfortunately, we know that feeling. Um, what was your view of the, of the weekend that, that Drew had? What was the difference between last weekend and this weekend? Yeah, I, I said it yesterday. You know, we try not to evaluate in ten at bats. You know, the baseball is such a tough game that. Um, it's human nature for kids to try a little hard. I don't think our older guys had the best of weekends. And I say older guys, it was, it was a group of juniors that didn't have the best weekend in the regionals. Um, so you just tried to ease their mind. Uh, just play. Don't, don't try to do too much. And, and they saw last weekend that even when they don't perform at a high level, I mean, there's guys that at the bottom of the lineup, there's guys that come off the bench. Uh, there, there's, there's other guys that can help us win. So... Um, but yeah, what Drew Ellis did was, I mean, that was, that, that was, that was impressive, obviously. It was, um, you know, I saw McKay hit the four home runs in a game. And, you know, for me, I'm like a spectator. You know, it's, uh, I, I don't take it for granted. You know, I see Devin Harrison make unbelievable plays. I've been watching Logan Taylor make those catches and Lyman and Stores and Summers. Like I said, it's, um, 
It's, there's a reason this group's brought me a lot of joy um, because I try not to take them for granted and realize how special they are. And you, you've talked a lot about Brendan and the accolades and not taking him for granted. Just talk about his final appearance here in this stadium and what it was like to, to go get him for one last time here. I, I, selfishly, I wanted him to get the win. I guess he didn't, didn't get the win against uh, Oklahoma. And uh, what's that, his 10th win? Yep. I wanted him to get 10. And uh, and so, you know, selfishly, you're you're pulling for these kids to, to just get some more stats and make sure everybody realize how special they are. So, I mean, what a gutsy performance. I mean, he he, uh, he grinded that out. And, um, you know, I, I got on the crowd a little bit last weekend um, because I really wanted to make sure they recognized him. Um, because you just don't know. I mean, we're in the one oh one oh game against Oklahoma. There's no guarantee we're making it to this weekend. I mean, we're confident. We think we are. But I just I wanted our crowd to start to realize you're running out of opportunities to, to show your appreciation for this kid. And um, what's really cool about Brendan um, is, you know, Monday night's going to be a celebration. And I don't think he'll be the only player drafted. Uh, I'm hoping there, there could be two or three. I don't know, is it two rounds the first night? Yeah. So I, I think I think we could have a couple, two or three maybe go, four. Um, but the players want to be here. And they wanted last year. I mean, believe me, last year's group um, is a special group, and they just passed the torch on to this group. But to me, the reason Brendan's, you know, arguably the best player uh, to play college baseball is how much his teammates love him. There's no jealousy. That's not easy. I mean, that, that's not easy in today's society. It's what about me, you know? Where's my time? Um, in this group, they, they have no problem, you know, taking a, a back seat to him or sharing all the success with him because they know. They know how valuable he's been uh, to this program, and they're appreciative that, that they got to play with, with this guy. It's, it's one of my promises. Um, I'm not going to promise you come here, you're going to start. I don't promise you're going to be the Friday night starter. I promise I'll surround you with players. So Brendan said that today was one of his favorite moments here. Do you personally have a favorite moment of his? Really today, you know, just because I know what it means to him. You know, I mean, the four home runs and some of those games, those will always make him smile. But, man, this is real joy today. This is this is what he wanted to do with his teammates. Um and he didn't even get the shirt today. I flipped the shirt to Ellis, and Ellis flipped it to Bordner, and I guarantee you Brendan McKay could care less that he didn't get the shirt. Like, he, he, he's not about that. He's, he's about this team advancing. You talk about what Bordner did. They, they were getting to him a little bit, would get runners on the base, but then he would buckle down. I mean, is that something? How many times have you seen that from Oh, man, I've, I've, I've watched that for three years, and that is a, man, that is a good offense. I mean, they are, they are well coached. Uh, offensively, they are really talented offensively, and uh, you knew it just wasn't going to be easy. I, I wish we could have extended the lead a few times there because you just knew you had to go through that lineup. And uh, the Pompeys and the Whites and the Rex and the Mayhans, and I mean, it's like, wow, um, that is a really good <laughs> offense. And what he did today um, is not, not to be taken lightly. What about what Bordner gave you there in the last couple innings also? We needed that because we, we used Wolf and Hensman yesterday. And we had Hensman ready to go. And if need be, we definitely would have gone. But Bordner was just in a good rhythm. And we just didn't want to we didn't want to mess with that rhythm. Um, you know, he knew the strike zone and what was working. And, and so uh, I, I've been watching Sam do that all year. I mean, I've been telling everybody, you know, Sometimes we take for granted. If you look at his numbers, whew, I mean, it's like video game numbers. Um, not easy. So it's been a monster year. Um, but Sam's a part of that bullpen, you know, with, with Hensman, Wolf, Elliott, Sparger, uh, Dale, Hummel, Martin. I mean, that, that, group's, that group's been tough. This is the fourth that, uh, time going to Doma. What's it like walking out in the stadium with your team, either during the opening ceremonies or, or just to get used to the stadium? The, the the ceremony started, I guess, they used to have games or something the next day. Or for some reason, I think the first time we ever went to the ceremony, I guess, well, we went the last two times. I, I can barely remember. Um, I remember getting the highest team GPA award. 
you know. So right now I'm hoping eight teams sit on the field and they call one team up. And, uh, and if someone beats our team GPA, I'll tip my hat to them. But I think we got a good shot to win that award. And, um, and hopefully the more we go there, the more comfortable we get, the more relaxed we get, the better I coach. Um, and so, you know, that we run out there and play. What, what do you tell the guys that haven't been there about that experience? And that's most of our team, you know, so I'll, I'll let the four seniors share, you know, their experience when they went a few years ago and, um, you know, just play the game. You know, if there's something this group's done, this, this group has, uh, this group has played the game and they played it the right way. So, um, while I st still got everybody here, let me, uh, I'm super excited for, for Coach Snyder and Coach Vrabel. You know, they, they came on this staff uh, three years ago. And so, you know, they, they come to a program that's been back-to-back -back trips to Omaha and losing in a Super Regional, you know, two guys that have never been to Omaha. Um, you know, I flew, uh, Adam Vrabel and I flew out to Omaha last year because Coastal Carolina was in it. That's his school. That's where he played. He played for Coach Gilmore. And, and I, I said, man, you have to see what this is. You deserve to go out there. If it was my school, my alma mater, the Citadel, I'd want to be out there. So um, just knowing how bad I wanted Coach Snyder and Coach Rabel to get out there. Um, I'm very appreciative of Tom Jurch and, and Mark Jurch and the athletic department. You know, it's not easy putting on these events um, and, and the effort they make and, and – and bidding to host regionals and super regionals uh, and the support we get uh, is awesome. You know, Danny Placencia, we call Tuto um, in our athletic department, you know, uh, Garrett and Brett and everybody who's worked long hours the last few weekends, you know. Uh, it's fun to advance. It's fun to be in the postseason, but it means a lot of people have to do a lot of work. Um, and I'm very appreciative of that, you know, for Coach O again back-to-back -back weeks and Joe DeBasso, you know, welcome and hope you enjoyed uh, your time in Louisville. As you now know, this is a special place. And, um, and last but not least, I, I mentioned his name uh, last weekend um, and he's recovering from a heart attack. You know, our good friend, Dr. Elko. And um, when the guys get on base, if you're wondering why they do the call me symbol, uh, that's for Dr. Elko. That's something he talks about when, when you're the type of friend that somebody can call you. That's that's when you're a friend, man. When, when you when you have that relationship with somebody, that brotherhood with somebody, um, and we use that phrase. And so every time a guy got on base, they knew Dr. Elko was watching the game, saying, "Call me. You can call me. I'll be there for you." And that's what this group's about. And that's uh, that's what makes them special. Anything else, guys? We're good? All right, thanks.